Imagine a country where there's no separation between government and military and media. Most Americans would probably think of Russia, China, or North Korea. But it's a perfect description of the United States today. And here in Washington, D.C., inside this nondescript building, the Center for a New American Security is a perfect example of just that. CNAS is a premier militarist think tank in Washington, especially for Democratic Party administrations. It's funded by the State Department and Pentagon, and has taken more money from weapons companies over the last several years than any other think tank. On top of that, it's funded by oil companies, big banks, and right-wing government, basically the most destructive forces on the planet. It's a farm for the Biden administration. At least 16 CNAS alumni are now in key positions in the Biden Pentagon and State Department. But maybe what's most shocking is that several national security and foreign policy reporters from elite U.S. media outlets are affiliated with CNAS, and therefore indirectly affiliated and likely paid by the U.S. government and corporations, the very forces that they should be holding accountable. For more than 20 years, New York Times Washington correspondent David Sanger has relentlessly pushed deceptions to con the public into supporting U.S. aggression and war. From the Bush administration's lies about WMDs in Iraq to lies about Iran attempting to create nuclear weapons, and evidence-free claims from intelligence agencies about Russian cyber attacks, these incendiary allegations were taken at face value with a clear goal to pressure then-President Trump to ramp up aggression against Moscow while conveniently filling the pockets of Sanger's weapon industry benefactors. Sanger's neocon cyber war fantasy was even turned into a movie by HBO. Cyber is the most inexpensive, highly destructive, highly deniable weapon. Foreign cyber actors are targeting America's critical infrastructure networks. Today, David Sanger is on to the COVID-19 lab leak theory. He's been at the forefront of every propaganda campaign that not only provides justification for aggression and war, but also generates huge profits for CNAS funders. Sanger's colleague, Eric Schmidt, national security reporter for the New York Times, is also in residence at CNAS. Back in 2020, he was promoting the obviously false Russian bounty story, which was later retracted after it had served its political purpose to force Donald Trump to take a harder anti-Russia stance. Of course, Schmidt was a reliable promoter of intelligence claims about Russian hacking, never displaying a scintilla of skepticism. And he dutifully portrayed the Trump administration's aggression against Iran as defensive. The Washington Post, at one point, found this kind of blatant media corruption at least questionable. In 2011, Time Magazine launched a series in collaboration with CNAS to promote war propaganda. And the Washington Post published an article questioning the ethics. Fast forward to 2013, billionaire Jeff Bezos buys the Washington Post, and WAPO correspondent David Finkel becomes a writer-in-residence at CNAS, during which he wrote two books on the U.S. war in Iraq, The Good Soldiers and Thank You for Your Service, just the kind of whitewash of the war that CNAS's funders would want the public to consume. Michael Gordon is another. He spent three decades at the New York Times. Among his greatest accomplishments was, alongside Judith Miller, promoting the Bush administration's Iraqi WMD deception. Gordon wrote that Iraq has stepped up its quest for nuclear weapons and has embarked on a worldwide hunt for materials to make an atomic bomb, citing anonymous U.S. officials. Now at the Wall Street Journal, Gordon has spent the last months pumping out Wuhan lab leak propaganda, once again promoting claims of intelligence officials without any skepticism. Greg Jaffe is a Washington Post national security reporter and another writer in residence at CNAS. His article on the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan quotes Elliot Cohen, a former Bush administration official who is now a fellow at CNAS. Jaffe and Cohen's shared affiliation is never disclosed in the article, an obvious breach of the most basic journalistic ethics. Tom Shanker used to be part of the CNAS writer in residence program when he was at the New York Times writing on U.S. wars. In 2012, Shanker wrote this blog post promoting a CNAS study without revealing his affiliation. Once again, a major conflict of interest and ethics out the window. There's also Rajiv Chandra Sekharan, who spent two decades doing PR for U.S. wars at the Washington Post and is now doing PR for Starbucks. Thomas Ricks, whose career has spanned posts at the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, and Foreign Policy magazine. 
Rix is an old Cold Warrior who has publicly stated that Putin is attacking the United States just like Osama bin Laden did, and that Americans defending Putin are no different than those defending bin Laden. Some of this information isn't new, it was reported in The Nation more than a decade ago, but the issue has only gotten worse as US politics have shifted right, spy agencies have gained more power in the media, and the new Cold War has accelerated. There's no real separation between the myriad of revolving doors and cash flow between weapons manufacturers, think tanks, the US government, and media. It's an incestuous, bloviating blob capable of producing one thing and one thing only. War. So when you think about the military industrial complex or the permanent war state, don't forget about what might be the most important component of all, the media. 